Hello guys and welcome back to the Augury Devlog series. In the previous video, we introduced ourselves and covered the history of the game. Over the past month, we've been hard at work adding new content and feel it is time to update you guys on all our progress. First, let's take a look at what Dustin has done with the terrain generation. For the majority of the month, I have been working on a few optimizations to the world generation. They say premature optimization is the root of all evil, but with this being one of the core systems of the game, we need this to run smoothly to keep an enjoyable experience and allow a good foundation for future content. The first optimization came from making some custom functions to interact with our file system. Doing so gives us greater control in the future than what our engine would allow by default. I also had to adapt the same functions to work with buffers where, again, we will have more control in the future. This took some time to get right and to iron out all the kinks, but I believe the end result was well worth it. Then came implementing it into the world generation itself, which was interesting to say the least. So that started a journey of two weeks worth of bug fixing and testing, until finally it ran. Luckily, this was an easy fix, and now it runs as intended. You might think to yourself, wow, those hills just randomly jumped to a much higher position, and you'd be right. That will be fixed by the next video, hopefully. Sadly, I ran out of time and couldn't finish the biome transitions properly. You might also think, didn't he say a few optimizations? He's only listed one. Right again. The next optimization is breaking the world generation code down to smaller functions and generating data over multiple frames instead of cramming a couple thousand calculations into one frame. Doing so will stop the noticeable stutter when calculating a new biome and cause the game to run much smoother. World generation isn't the only thing I've been working on. During the time that I step away from programming to clear my head, I've been working on an animation for the opening sequence of the game. As you watched at the start of the last video, the augury text just fades in and fades back out. However, we want that to dissolve and fall to pieces. I spent a few hours looking for tools to take an image and simulate falling, but nothing felt right. So I decided to go overkill and make it in Blender with physics simulation. Sadly, the file became corrupted when I was halfway through and this is all I had backed up. Once I finish with this, we can add it, as well as another animation that Leo is currently working on, into the intro sequence of the game. Visually, not much has changed on my end of the game's development. Let's look at the progress Chess has made implementing all of the wonderful environment artwork from Dan. Over the past month, I've been busy implementing new environment art into Augury, as well as changing how our game renders terrain tiles. I've also had to change the way we store our animations and asset lists. For the past little bit, we have been using older prototype tree sprites for our game, even though we've had finished artwork for a while now. So I've taken the time to put all the finished tree assets into the game. Trees in Augury are rendered in layers, with each tree having a background leaves layer, a trunk layer, and a foreground leaves layer. We have done it that way so we can have better control on how trees are implemented and it will allow us to experiment with procedural animations in the future. We are still trying to figure out what colors work best for the background leaves, but here is what we have so far. In Augury there are several varieties of trees, each giving a different type of resource that our settlement can use for construction and crafting. The trees we currently have in the game are common trees, evergreen trees, birch trees, oak trees, and willow trees. Some trees have level requirements to be cut. For instance, an oak tree requires a worker to have level 10 wood cutting in order for it to be cut down. I would personally like to add more trees in the future, but we'll see how things go. We do have plans for a very rare magical tree, but artwork is still being made for that to come together properly. After implementing the new tree sprites, I felt like I wanted to give them a little more life by adding particle effects to them. We already have a basic wind system in the game used by some of the buildings. So I created an effect that makes lead particles fly off for the trees when the wind blows. I would like to expand this in the future to have varying wind speeds and direction, but this is a good start. I also added random falling leaves that spawn from the trees just to add a little movement when the wind isn't blowing. Next I started working on implementing new scenery artwork that our artist Dan had recently completed, adding over a hundred additional sprites to the environment. There are scenery elements that are drawn behind the train tiles and scenery elements that are drawn on top of them. The amount of variety in the environment has went up exponentially and so far I've had some good results. Another thing I've done is changed the way in which our game actually renders train tiles in the world. Before we just had four different train tiles that we would place in a random order, 
but now the grass on the tiles is separated from the dirt underneath, so tiles are rendered like this now. Building on top of that change is the addition of snowy regions in the game that can spawn at higher elevations. In the future we hope to add special mobs and resources to areas like these and create a freezing effect for units in the game to add to the difficulty of the survival in our harsh environment. Unfortunately, over the past month, our artist who was mainly responsible for character animations has had to step away from the project due to certain global events happening. Although, I would like to thank him again so much for all the awesome work he has done for Augury, and I do wish him the best of luck in all of his future endeavors. Luckily, I was in contact with another awesome animator, and he was willing to help out with the project. The only problem was that our last animator used Pixel Edit, and our new one uses A Sprite. So I had to take on the colossal task of recreating our entire animation workflow in Asprite. And this took a considerable amount of time, but after a couple of days I got it done and I'm really looking forward to implementing new animations into our game. Lastly this month, I took on the task of converting our art asset lists from Google Docs to Trello. I felt this change was needed so I could better organize things and add relevant information about how assets need to be created and how they're going to be implemented into the game. This new Trello board is public, so if you guys are interested in what features and artwork are going to be added into Augury, make sure you check it out with the link in the description. A large amount of work, both visual and technical, has taken place in the last month. To follow the development of our project, subscribe to this channel and hop in the Discord server. We post smaller updates to the public there. To get behind the scenes information before anyone else, as well as preview builds of the game, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. However, we urge those in struggling situations from the virus to focus on supporting yourself first. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and comment. Something so simple helps motivate us to continue working on the project. Thanks, and see you in the next video.